Joining me right now to look ahead is the Bonson Group Chief Investment Officer, David Bonson. He's also launched a six-part video series called No Free Lunch in Defense of Free Enterprise. David, great to see you. Thanks very much. I want to ask you about that six-part video series in a second. But first, how are you positioned going into year-end, and what are you expecting from the new year in markets? Well, I think that 2023 is going to really be interesting in terms of not what the Fed is doing, but then what the economic impact ends up being from what the Fed did this year. And so all eyes were focused throughout 2022 on Fed activity. I think that's very unfortunate. I don't want the Fed to have such an important role in the economy and in the markets that we become obsessed with, you know, 10 or 12 people administering the economy. I prefer we be focused on profits and on innovation and on economic activity. But unfortunately, I think the Fed has a very elevated role. And in 2023, we're going to see what the recessionary impact ends up looking like from this tightening cycle. Yeah. And that's what I want to know from you, what your expectations are. We spoke with Catherine Rooney Vera earlier in the word on Wall Street. She said she's expecting contraction in most of the quarters in 2023. Uh, You've also got a situation where markets are already down, what, 20 to 30 percent, depending on what average you're looking at. Are we going to see a repeat of that next year for markets? Well, it's very unlikely that you get another 30 percent down in the Nasdaq. A a, a huge portion of the froth has already come out. Remember, when the Nasdaq's down 30, there's a bunch of stuff down 70. And so it's a mixed bag, even with the S&P. This looks so much, and you remember this period so well, Maria, this looks so much like when the dot-com era blew up. A lot of value did okay. A lot of the Dow has done fine. The Dow is not really down that much. But the more risky, high beta, cyclical areas have have suffered much uh, worse, including, obviously, the technology sector. I think in 2023, the big unknown is the severity of the recession. If you end up getting a very minor recession, like we did in 2002, then you might see markets look through it and start to recover quickly. But really, it's when the Fed kind of pauses, eventually they're going to be cutting. And I happen to think they're going to be cutting before this time next year. But we have to kind of see what they break before what they know before we know what they try to fix. Uh, Leo Kelly, jump in. David, good to see you again. Um, Question is. um, 2021, uh, obviously, growth uh, was the rage. And the contrarian trade would have worked out well, as you pointed out. Value's done extremely well this year. Um, Some of those contrarian trades did well. What's the contrarian trade for 2023 going into 2024? Where do investors make money that they're not looking at today? The contrarian side, I think, is going to be emerging markets because I don't believe the dollar can continue rallying the way it has been. And and in fact, I think the earnings growth in a lot of emerging markets is very attractive. It's just a currency headwind. I wouldn't be non-selective about that. I wouldn't be buying the whole index, but I think there's certain uh, selective opportunities in emerging markets that are contrarian. Um, the, the aspect that I think is maybe less contrarian but still very fundamental is in consumer staples, Leo. I think those companies have tremendous pricing power, and the damage of higher input prices is already known, but now their margins have expanded, and I really like that space. Real quick, David, on your six-part series, tell us about it. Yeah, we're just very focused, Maria, on trying to make a moral defense of markets. My biggest concern right now for my friends on the right is that they seem to believe that they can defend markets only on the basis of efficiency and how well markets do over time and that they're conceding the moral argument to the left. I happen to, as a Christian, believe very strongly in a spiritual foundation, but even apart from that faith orientation, I really believe that there needs to be a more holistic, moral argument made for why markets not only bring people out of poverty, but that they represent the uh, most full opportunity for humanity to truly flourish. Yes, that's a great point, David. And you're right. Thanks very much for being here. David Bonson joining us this morning on all of that. We will see you soon, David. Thank you.